Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. I'm a graphic designer, a hand lettering artist, and a mainly logo designer, and I make these videos for you on my YouTube channel to help you grow and learn more about design in general, not just logo design and hand lettering, but design in general, and so you can learn some more tools and software things. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you five of Adobe Illustrator's most underrated tools, the most least used tools as well, tools that will make your life a lot easier. If you're new to this channel, then please consider pressing that red subscribe button, turning on notifications so you never miss a video like this. This video is sponsored by me today because I am holding a workshop with my friend, Brandon Federico from Voyage and Vanquish over in London. We're gonna talk a bit more about it at the end, but if you wanna know how to satisfy clients and to gain clients, know how to price and everything else, wait for the end or click the link down below after this video. Let's get straight into these tools. This first tool is called Recolor Artwork. Now the coolest thing about Illustrator is obviously everything is done by vector. So this means that we can change colors very easily. Beforehand, you would normally have to like bring out the art, like the art board. And then when you've brought that out, you'd go through each different color and change them. But you kind of like the way the colors work together. You just don't actually like the color. Well, the Recolor Artwork tool makes it so much easier to recolor your artwork in many different ways. All we need to do is make a copy of the illustration. Here's my sad illustration here highlight all the shapes and the colors inside of this illustration that you want to change go up to the top and you'll find this little color wheel and it says recolor artwork click on that and you'll be taken to this box now this box is here so we can assign different colors to the selection of colors all we need to do is go to edit if you want to lock all your colors together so they work in tandem with each other, press this lock function here, which will link the harmonies of the color. When you lock that and you go to the hue, you can literally change the color of your artwork like so to something a bit nicer like that. This tool is amazing for anyone who needs to get quick color changes to the clients. And instead of going in and having to dot change all the colors, this will make it easier. This next tool is called the Shape Builder tool. Now you may have heard of something called the Pathfinder tool, which is over here. Now what the Pathfinder tool does is it allows you to create a shape and then when you add another shape over the top of it and select them both together, when you go to one of these modes here in Pathfinder, such as, you know, Unite, if you press Unite, it unites the shape. If you were to press minus front, you would minus that shape from your shape, making it easier to do geometric shape adding and dropping. Well, if, what if you wanted to do this a bit na more natural and more effective and quicker? Well, all you have to do is use the Shape Builder tool, which is something that logo designers and illustrators can use to their heart's content. Let's say I wanna make this into a moon. All I have to do very quickly is just duplicate it by alt dragging and that duplicates it. Now I wanna take this moon or this part of the circle away from this circle leaving it with a crescent well all we need to do is in fact i'll just move that there so it's a proper moon all we need to do is highlight both the shapes and we can press shift and m and what this does is it gives us this cursor with a plus in front and when you press shift and m it's actually taking you to the shortcut of the shape builder tool which is found here on the left now what this allows us to do is it allows us to add and subtract shapes from the selection that we've got so everywhere where a shape is interacting with another one you can see it's highlighting what if I wanted to, you know, just keep that shape as it is? What if I wanted to get rid of this? Well, you hold Alt and it will get rid of. If you don't hold anything and you just drag or click, it will add to the shape. So it works like the Pathfinder tool, but it's a bit easier. Now to create the crescent, all I needed to do was, you know, hold Option or Alt, and it gives me the minus on my cursor. And all we have to do is drag in to get rid of them and we've created a perfect crescent moon that we can now go ahead and put in our artwork this also applies in many different areas you can like scale this up if you wanted to this is just a bad example for me to show you but we can use another shape like a square just to map out where it's crossing the borders outside of the artboard we can highlight the shape by selecting them all shift clicking go to your shape builder tool and just minus all these shapes out and there you go. It's no longer outside of the artboard. 
The next tool is probably one of the best and most fun tools and it's pretty new too. It's called Freeform Gradient. What the Freeform Gradient tool allows us to do is to have more control and to add multiple gradients in a more intuitive way on our screen rather than just using sliders. Let me explain. Go up to your window, go grab the gradient function here and it should open somewhere on your screen this window this is the gradient window all we have to do is on the gradient window here go to freeform gradient when we click it it might lag for a second and all we need to do is drag around some points and create other points now each point is a gradient and you can actually bring them out bring them in we can even create a black one here change the colors change the angles change the directions we've got this nice red there and we can add more colors in so all we do is click change the color and if you don't like a color you can delete it very easily because all we need to do really is just create something cool like this and when you move it around it's literally free form so you have so much control over your artwork here and again this is completely vectorized work as well which is very cool when you click off it and click back on it you won't be able to edit it very easily you have to actually go to the gradient function here and press edit gradient which it will give you these points again for you to edit there's so many cool ways that you can use this to create awesome trippy gradients for your work i just like it and it's such an under feature that people aren't using right now the fourth most underrated tip of today is the export for screens now I don't know about you but if you have a lot of logo designs on your screen so many different artboards it's hard to go and save them all into JPEGs or to PNGs or to other files different file sizes well now we can do that pretty easily all we need to do is press control alt or option and E and when we do that it exports for screens it will actually give you a dialog box with all the screens that you want in your selection you can choose your range you can choose where you want it to be inputted i'm going to choose my creative cloud you can choose the size the format and you can add another scale to this including we can do times four png and then when we press export artboards it will export them all instantly and then bring up the file opener to show you where your work is this is great for anyone who needs to send some work to different people in maybe a few different file formats. It will save you hours. And the last tool is for anyone who loves the pen tool or anyone who loves editing anchor points. If you don't know, I specialize in logo type design. So I do a lot of anchor point setting. So I edit a lot of anchor points on a daily basis. Anchor points are these little fidgety things here. These points here are what makes a vector shape a vector shape. It actually is the border and the way that we manipulate that has a direct consequence to the shape. Now, although in the workshop that I'll be giving, I'll be teaching more about this and how to professionally set your anchor points in logo type design and icon design and hand lettering. This tip is for anyone who's finding it very hard to see what's going on on their screen or needs uh, more control over their anchor points. All you need to do is press control or command K and it will bring up your preferences. And we're gonna go to the second one down after general, which is selection and anchor display. And all we need to do here is we get this little slider. Now what this does is it gives us different handle styles. So we can have this style here and a smaller handle or anchor point size, or we can make it large. And I like them large, so I have more of a surface area to work with. Over the years of vectorizing my logo type designs using the pen tool, I've realized having these large anchor points and handles with the big balls at the end of the handles makes it a lot easier to pick them and to not get them wrong. It makes it easier to spot mistakes as well during it. That tip is more for a specific group of people on here. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before you go, I'm gonna leave you with a clip and a promo of my new workshop that is coming to London. Roll it.
That promo was promoting the logo design process workshop in London from creative brief to final delivery. The whole workshop is centered around new and experienced designers looking to do more logo design work in their freelance career. We're gonna be talking and showing you exactly how to get clients like I get. Showing you how to work out the client's goals when they don't know themselves and how you can have client success. Brandon is a strategy guy. He knows exactly how to clients work and tick. And we know this because I've worked for him because I branded his design agency. We've worked together on multiple projects, we've been friends, and he helps me out with the strategy of my business. Now, I'm gonna be teaching in this workshop any logo design material. So I'm gonna be showing you how I design logos professionally for companies and how I take not only Brandon's information, but my own information and get client success. The biggest thing with logo design clients is making sure it's a success. Knowing how much to charge and having that confidence to charge clients is what's going to actually bring you from here to here in your design work. It will give you more time to spend on projects, you'll get more clients and live a more comfortable life. All this information is integrated into this workshop in London. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. If you want to know more about it and get your ticket click the link down below it'll take you to the eventbrite website where you can get your ticket tickets are very limited there's only 20 of them and it's in london in august don't worry it is also on a weekend guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it leave a like and subscribe to this video if you want to comment down below your questions regarding this video or any tips that you know if you didn't like the video click that dislike button twice and i'll catch you in the next one see you soon goodbye